So if you've been on holiday to Thailand this year and you got a 2019 coin made here in South Africa and spent in Thailand, the baht coin, 25 centile, uh, the 50... Stang and the 50 stang, um, is made here in basically Pretoria. That's right. What are the economics of manufacturing coins for other countries? Because it's kind of weird to think that you... It's a very dense, bulky, heavy item that you got huge security issues around, you yes. manufacture them here, then pop them into boxes and send them all over the world. Yes, I, I mean, you know, coins, as, as is the case in South Africa, are part of transacting in any economy. And for as long as the society, the public in that particular country needs coins to transact, you know, there's an obligation on the government, on the central bank, to make those coins available. It's a means of transacting. We have to always look at ways of lowering the cost and making it a lot more com um, economical. Um, so unfortunately, you know, if you're making coins for a country that's sitting in Asia, you have to put them on a container and you ship them. It takes four weeks, five weeks to get there. Um, it's a bulky item, um, but that's the price you pay. I mean, it's a free market in coin manufacture, if you like. I mean, if, if a country decides it needs coins made, do they, what, put it out to tender to the 50 mints around the world and say, who can do this best, fastest, and cheapest? And it's very competitive, indeed. Um, you know, the, the, the mint that's got the latest technology, that's got the lowest cost, that's got um, the most competitive urge, um, is the one that uh, that will win the work um, around the world. Um, many different, uh, uh, um, you know, issues come into the, it's the distance from, you know, how far you have to ship it, um, your internal uh, economics here, how, how cheap are you compared to, you know, the, the rate, the forex rate, uh, the rent dollar exchange rate um, comes into play uh, quite often. Many different uh, aspects, metal, co metal prices, um, nickel, steel, and so on. Because I mentioned I was here 20 years ago, and at that point, the Mint was making coins for 20 countries, including New Zealand, which is over there, around the other side of the world. And that's crazy. And now the Canadians make New Zealand's coins. Yes. It's a kind of insane economy of money doing the rounds around the world. Yeah, and, and there's actually overcapacity for making coins around the world, um, which is why you know it can also be a bit of a race to the bottom. So we currently have uh, uh, we've made a decision that our main focus is actually our African partners, our African neighbours. Uh, we have a much greater focus on uh, serving um, our partners around uh, in SADC, uh, East Africa, and so on. They are closer. The economics are much better. In terms of South Africans and the coinage that we use, um, do we have different series come out? Uh, when is the next series due? And is it at that point where we get this mysterious ten so, coin? So, so, so South Africa's coin series has been in circulation now for since 1989. So when you talk about the coin series, the the, the sort of two ton the, five rand coin. That's for right. That's part of uh, that that series. Um, the one rand, the new one rand, um, and two rand the 10 cent, 20 cent and 50 cent in these shapes that we have, the yellow, 20 cent and 50 cents. That's the new series coins that has been around for 30 years. A typical coin series, you know, between 20 and 25 years, that's a good lifespan. A coin should last you 25 years. Um, so I've, we, got, I've uh, had two rank coins from 1990, for goodness sake. I mean, these things they, stay they in last. circulation they, forever. They, yeah? they last, and then you just start managing the quality um, of the coins, and then the ones that are you know, wearing off, you can start to remove them from, from, from circulation, but they last a long time, and you only have to issue it once. It goes out into the market, they continue to circulate. So it's actually quite cost-effective, for the central bank to issue coins. How many five rand um, coins did you make last year? Uh, we're currently making roughly 25 million uh, five rands on average each year. Um, and you know, when we make we make us you know, 25 million, 10 million of those or 15 million of those would be commemorative. Might be Nelson Mandela on the or like we are doing with the uh, 25 years of democracy. And people like to hold on to those. We encourage people to buy with them. We want people to experience them because they're commemorative. We want the whole nation to experience them.
Um, unfortunately, people tend to, to hold on to them. The urban myths around coins, the one, that, was it a two rand, was it a five rand coin with the union buildings? At one point, people said, oh, it's very rare. It's worth a lot of money. People started hoarding no. them. I mean, that sort of stuff is rubbish, right? We, we, we are flattered when people hold on to them because we can see that they appreciate them. But they are not rare. They are in abundance. We make millions of these coins. And we do so deliberately because they are worth, if it's a two rand coin, it's worth two rands. It's a commemoration because it's our role as a South African Mint to depict, you know, themes and... Um, South Africa's heritage on our coins. You've even got a items of pride. You've even got connection. I mean, this year is the 50th anniversary of the moon landings, and there's a South African connection to the moon landings, we which find, you commemorate on coins. We find reasons to commemorate significant events, significant items, significant um, happenings in South Africa, and 1969 yeah. um, with the moon landing, Pratly Party was invented in South Africa, landed on the moon. It was part of the, uh, the booster um, you know, component that, um, that, that was part of the, the moon lander. It was a South African invention, and we are, have launched a, a coin series, a coin set, commemorating the moon landing and commemorating the Pratly Party. Each year, we find a new South African invention to commemorate on coins, um, as part of telling South Africa stories and uh, national pride. Bitcoins, you're never going to be able to mint those, are you? Um, have, do you actually have a machine <laughs> here that, that mines bitcoins? You're not going to be able to do that. I see your days are numbered, potentially. But yeah, to, to, to illustrate the we'll point that uh, we'll I mean, when this coin was minted, this, this one rand coin with Jan van Riebeck on the side from 1966, if I'd taken this coin to a shop, I could have got 200 Chappies bubblegum. 200 Chappies bubblegum, two for a cent in those days. I went to a shop the other day and they were selling Chappies for two rand each. I need two of these big boys in order to buy a single Chappie. But if I melted it down and I got the silver out of it and sold the silver, I could buy myself 40 Chappies. Well, the only, the only coin that you can buy the same thing today as you could, you know, 50 years ago is the Kruger Rand. Because, you know, the, the Kruger Rand standard was that you could buy a suit with a Kruger Rand in 1975. And today you could probably buy a very good, two good suits with a one, a one ounce Kruger Rand. So the, that has held its in value. In the spirit of sharing, if I give you this one, you can, no, you're not doing um, It's not a good trade. That's a great trade for you. We'll discuss this off camera. That's it from Taking Stock. My thanks to, uh, to Tumi, who is the Managing Director of the South African Mint, Tumi Tsetlo. He's not going to be parting with this 20,000 Rand coin in exchange for something I paid 200 Rand for from a coin deal I'm going to get you. It's only worth 80 bucks. Till next time on Taking Stock. Good night.